Our News on Terror segment tonight, Iran is racing towards a nuclear weapon and no one's stopping them. According to U.S. Director of National Intelligence, Daniel Coates, Iran's ballistic missile work continues unimpeded and could be used to launch a nuclear weapon. This is a clear violation of the nuclear deal, so why isn't the United States doing anything about it? Joining me now from the Washington Free Beacon, Adam Credo. Adam, good to see you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Adam, this is uh, pretty substantial news, I think. The director of national intelligence says that Iran is continuing to advance their nuclear development, even an, uh, a ballistic missile that could take a nuclear warhead potentially far outside of their own country. Yeah, look, they've been working on this for quite some time. They've been doing it before the nuclear deal was announced. They've been doing it even more since. Uh, Iran has test-fired multiple ballistic missiles in the months uh, since the nuclear deal, and they've also uh, done that since Trump has taken office. Uh, the Obama administration very, very gravely gave them a pass on such behavior, did not petition the United Nations where uh, this type of testing is banned. Uh, it's unclear what Trump exactly is going going to do when faced with this, but Iran has actually kicked it up even more. They use this so-called space program. Of course, we know Iran is not interested in space exploration. They use the launches uh, as a cover for ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missile technology, which would help them shoot a nuclear missile potentially over to the U.S. and other places that are quite far from Tehran. Right, and I think we have to remember here, this is not just some country that's messing around with their uh, technology development here. This is the nation that said that they want to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. This is the nation that calls America the great Satan. This is the nation that funds probably the leading funder of terrorism in our world. This is not a friendly nation. They should not have nuclear weapons. They should not have a nuclear warhead. They should not have the capacity to send, to fly, to launch that nuclear warhead anywhere, absolutely anywhere. Adam, this has to be a violation of the nuclear deal, right? Well, in fact, it isn't a violation of the nuclear deal itself. That is the agreement signed between the U.S., uh, Iran, and other world powers, also known as the JCPOA. That's the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Um, what it says in that deal is that Iran is banned from nuclear-related activities. Ballistic missiles intentionally are not touched on, and that was a concession that was made uh, very much at the last minute by Secretary of State John Kerry, and uh, he was told to do so by the president himself, as far as I can tell. This was one of the concessions that Tehran was looking for before agreeing to the deal. So that right. means that under the letter of the nuclear deal, Iran is to uh, allow to continue with ballistic missiles. Under UN resolutions, though, that's called 2231. It's an international resolution that uh, calls on Tehran to refrain from such behavior. So they may be in violation of the UN resolution, but not the nuclear deal itself. That's what makes this uh, so complicated. Trump could petition the UN, but I don't think China, Russia, uh, some of these others are really going to have it in them to uh, sanction Iran for this behavior. No, listen, Adam, that's the reason I ask you the question. This type of behavior, the fact that they're developing this nuclear technology, these, you know, intercontinental ballistic missiles without any, without any, uh, anything stopping them whatsoever, that it's allowed under this deal. That's the point of asking the question because President Obama put this in place. He knew what was going to happen. He knew that allowing them to do this, they would do this. This is their stated goal. This nuclear deal was claimed by the Democrats to stop the development of nuclear weapons by Iran. It never had a fighting chance of stopping them. It's absolutely insane. It's insane. And it all, in my opinion, falls at Obama's feet here. But in regards to the U.N., fortunately, this is against U.N. Uh, resolutions here. But is there, is there any chance that Iran is going to face sanctions for it? I find it highly doubtful. Um, again, I, the U.S. would have to bring this to the Security Council. Uh, they would have to vote on it. Again, Russia, China, some of these other nations, I don't think are going to have it in them to go ahead and sanction Tehran. Now, Trump could do something else. He could sanction unilaterally, uh, unilaterally Iran. He could say, as the executive, that we are reimposing certain sanctions on Iran, sanctions concerning their missile program and potentially even their nuclear program itself. Itself. Now, Iran would likely react and say it's in violation of the deal. But um, look, this is a decision that Trump is going to have to make, I, I think. And it's somewhat concerning to me, to be honest. In the next couple of weeks, I think we're going to see Trump waive a lot of Iran sanctions that have been on the books. And that's a 
goodwill gesture to Iran uh, to show them that he's upholding his end of the Iran nuclear deal as they kind of go about this review that the administration has undertaken. Uh, I find that concerning because I think that only steps up Iran's bad behavior and lets them know that there's justification for it, that we're not going to penalize them when they act in a manner that uh, goes against the grain and the intent of the nuclear deal. Well, it lets them know that no matter what they do, they're not going to suffer any consequences. It's essentially a continuation of President Obama's policy towards them. It's very dangerous. Adam, I'm going to have to echo what you said. I don't understand what happened to the campaign promises President Trump was touting when he was talking at all those rallies when he was talking about how very very closely he would police this nego or police this nuclear deal how that's how he got out of contracts in the business world when you know he wanted to be done with them he looked at the very letter of the law and the slightest little uh, deviation from the letter of the law and he was out of there I don't understand why he doesn't apply that to this situation because it seems to me that we're the ones that are in the foolish position we're not able to do anything to levy any sanctions to prevent Iran from developing developing their nuclear weapons, and Iran gets all the advantages and nuclear weapons. Yeah, I think you're right. It's a very relevant question, and it's one the administration more and more is going to have to answer. Um, I haven't heard from them a satisfactory response. Uh, all they'll tell you at this point is that they're reviewing the Iran nuclear deal. It's frozen and right now being implemented as it was under Obama until they complete this. Yet there's been no timeline by which to complete the review. And at the same time that they're kind of stuck in this mode of halting, of reviewing, Iran continues to do all the bad things that it has done in the past, harassing U.S. Uh, ships in the Persian Gulf, working on ballistic missile technology, trudging along with research and development on nuclear centrifuges that spin uranium, the key component in a nuclear weapon, and of course the rhetoric of uh, destroying Israel and killing Americans. The Iranians have an election coming up, and at this point all I can see is hardliners, those who uh, hate the United States and even oppose the uh, nuclear deal to some extent, uh, are, are winning. These are the people that are ahead right. right now. That's what the nation wants, and Trump should be paying attention to this. Right, and I have a little suggestion for the Trump administration, a good timeline for this review. Try and finish it up before Iran gets their hands on a nuclear weapon. The whole world would thank you for it. Adam, I thank you for coming on the show. It was great to talk to you.